Brian Stelter is one of America's most well-known media commentators. Even after getting fired from CNN in 2022, the former host of that network's Reliable Sources continues to be a ubiquitous voice in media. He's a special correspondent for Vanity Fair and author of the new book, Network of Lies, the epic saga of Fox News, Donald Trump, and the battle for American democracy. It is out today. Brian Stelter, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thanks, Appreciate great to be here, Dan. It. Good to see you. We'll get to the book in a moment. Um, but first, I wanted to get your take on some big media-related topics. There's a of, lot right now. Of the day, there's a ton going on, all right? Now, this was a story we covered yesterday yeah. on my show, which is hundreds of journalists, many from the top publications in America, yeah. writing an open letter to the media. And this is what part of uh, what they said in that letter. They said, we're renewing the call for journalists to tell the full truth without fear or favor, to use precise terms that are well-defined by international human rights organizations, including apartheid, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. Those are the words that they want the media to start using with regard to Israel. I had a big debate with one of the I people. I was watching was, last night. All right, so which side do you want on I this? think this is largely coming from progressive writers, some of whom, yes, are journalists, but many of whom are other members of the media, not actually in newsrooms. To the extent that they are in newsrooms, they should push their standards and practices department to think about these issues. But really? yes, they should think about using the word genocide and ethnic cleansing? What I'm saying is it shouldn't be up to those individuals. It should be up to the institutions, right? At News Nation and elsewhere, there are leaders who think about these things really carefully. Those those editors and bosses should decide, not individual writers. However, I do think it's important to, to express words matter, but words are not going to end this war. Choosing the words in these articles is not going to end the violence. So I'm most interested not in what writers in New York think, but what reporters on the ground there think. Yeah, but I, again, there are, look, there are reporters in Gaza who are very upset uh, about what's happening. It doesn't change the reality that this is not a genocide, this is not an ethnic cleansing, and those words shouldn't be used in this context. You want to criticize Israel for civilian deaths? Fair. You want a fair to debate to have. You want to talk about Netanyahu? Fair debate to have. When you start using words like genocide and ethnic cleansing, I would think that someone like Brian Stelter would be saying, those words don't fit. Well, I'm not signing that petition, but I'm saying those individual writers don't matter as much as what the institutions That's do. Cop out and I've That's seen a cop out That's a cop out answer, Stelter. I don't think it is, but okay, try uh, me on another one. <laughs> All right, so let's go to, we're not going to get a straight answer out of Brian on that one. Okay. I get it. All right, you, you, one more chance? I wouldn't sign the letter. All right, there you go. <laughs> well, what do you think of the White House press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre? I've often said that I think she's in over her head, that she sometimes get asked questions and she responds in a kind of word salad. Um, your thoughts? I think it's a combative press room, and that's a good thing. It's good that she is challenged and scrutinized. Here's where I have sympathy for her, though. I don't think you feel the same way. The clip culture, the internet clip culture, takes all of her worst moments, and sometimes people only see those, and they don't that's see true. the full press conference. So that's the only reason why I have sympathy. But when you do watch the press conferences, there are a lot of moments which aren't sort of the gotcha, oh, this sure. is ridiculous, where she just seems, you know, to be in a little over her head. I no? don't think Sarah Huckabee Sanders was faring any better during the Trump years in that room. I'm not sure. I'm not sure in terms of the ability to do what they do, which is answer mm -hmm. questions. You can say that you think she was more deceptive. You can say that you think that, you know, someone in the Trump administration mm -hmm. was less straightforward, whatever you want to say. But in terms of the job of press secretary, being able to respond to questions, and right. even if it's a non-answer, sort of like the non-answer you gave me to the first question, you would have been... Ah, very, you would so have been you a, want better yeah, non-answers. I want, want better non-answers. <laughs> I, I want better non-answers, in part. I'd rather just have the president himself speak more to the press. All right. Uh, Paul Pelosi case. I want to ask you about this one, because he took the stand yesterday, testify against his attacker. Even his attacker said he didn't know uh, Pelosi. Some in the far-right media had run with these wild conspiracy theories oh, about yeah. them being gay lovers, um, and they must have known each other. He says they didn't know each other. The defendant says they didn't know each other. Yeah. We see the defendant now breaking into the house from the side. Right. We're not going to see any apologies for this, are we? No, we're going to see it buried. It's going to go down the memory hole. It's as if this never happened. It's as if this was never uh, alleged at all. And I think that's really sad. I also think it's such a kooky legal strategy by the defendant, basically saying he believed all these crazy lies. He believed it all. Is that actually going to hold up in court? I would assume no. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, he's admitting that he, that he did it. Right? It's like implying he's insane, but not arguing insanity. Right. They're, they're arguing basically the, the why he did it is right. the only uh, question. And they're I just giving it, more attention to the conspiracy there is, which is a problem. In a federal case, though, the intention matters in any way. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below 
to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.